What kind of questions do you have about the plane? Or yes, sir. Is there a taxi weight versus a takeoff weight? Well, you can. There's a you can have a maximum taxi weight of six thousand and forty pounds, but a maximum takeoff weight of six thousand pounds. So you got to burn off about six gallons of fuel doing your run up and taxi in order to be at, at maximum gross weight to take off. So there is a small difference. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you do full fuel, mm -hmm. uh, what do you? What is your passenger cargo weight? Surprisingly, Endurance. with full fuel, which is two hundred ninety six gallons. Uh, you're limited to two full-size adults, about 450 pounds. So you can take two full adults plus some baggage with full fuel, which if you look at a Mustang or a CJ1 or a, even a, a, an Ultra 5, <clears throat> almost all jets are about the same. If you put all the fuel on, the board, on board, you're limited to about two, maybe three passengers. That's it. So that's pretty standard from what I've seen. I don't know a lot of, I'm sure the bigger jets it's different. But the smaller jet, that's kind of standard. So, what kind of range do you have then? Well, with two, well, two people and some luggage, about thirteen hundred miles. Yeah. Yes, sir. What's the spool up speed on from dead idle to you know max uh, max eaters on takeoff or on a go around? Well, I don't know what the spool up. Time is, but there is a lag, as most people know with jets. I mean, that's why you, you basically, when you're doing an approach, you're doing it with reserve power. In other words, you're putting more drag on the plane than than letting the plane just be at slowest possible speed. You're giving it some power so that you're powering through the approach, so that the spool up time is less when you hit your minimum descent altitude. Um, the last thing you want to do is go full idle and be a half mile out. <clears throat> I mean, you want to have idle in almost all the way down until you make the runway and then pull it back. Uh, as far as the V-rotate speed is 90 knots. Uh, that's the when you begin rotation. Gear up as soon as you got positive rate and flaps up through 115. Um, but it, so far, just about the, the lowest, one of the things you have to do to, to pass the initialization test is put in your departure runway and put in your departure uh, runway length as far as the amount you need to take off. It already knows the length of the runway you're on. Uh, the, the, and I always put in the amount of runway it takes to clear a 50-foot obstacle, which is really the safety factor that you put in there. And if it's light load, about 1,800 feet. If it's a heavy load, about 3,000 feet. So 1,800 to 3,000 between the light load and the, the maximum load is about the range. A hot day, it's going to get longer. So. But yeah, the jet doesn't react as fast as a piston airplane does with regards to thrust. There's a lag. Donnie? Tell them about the automatic uh, weight and balance. <clears throat> in each seat, it, it automatically tells you where you Yeah, when you, both in the app and when you're doing the initialization, it pulls up a map of the, of the uh, cabin, shows you all the seats, and you go through and you tap the seat and you put in the, the weight that each person is in each seat plus where your cargo is and how much it is, how much uh, TKS fluid you have in the plane. Um, and it, <clears throat> then you put in, it, you, you synchronize the fuel load, it matches the fuel load that's in the plane, and then it gives you a weight and balance graph on the screen. <laughs> so it'll tell you where you are within the envelope for maximum weight and where you'll be at landing based upon the destination that you put in to make sure that you're below the maximum landing weight. So all that is on the MFD screen of the aircraft so that you're actually checking your weight and balance in the airplane against what you had in your app, you know, when you prepared your flight plan. So it's, it's truly amazing what this plane does for you. The pressurization system, as in most large jets now, fully automatic. You know, it's got a maximum differential pressure of 6.4 PSI, that averages about 6 PSI. But when you do your, your uh, initialization process, you put in your destination airport, and it elevates the cabin and decreases the cabin as you go up and down. So, and then it's got weight on wheel switches. As soon as you touch down, it dumps any excess pressure there is in the cabin, uh, if there is any. So, that's cool stuff. What about annual recurrent training? What's required? Um, I have to do annual recurrent training, which is basically a check ride. Uh, and then every six months, I have to do IPC training. And the purpose of, of that is 
That's, the, that's required by being a jet type rated pilot. So every six months I have to do ITC, every 12 months I have to do a, a flight review. And Cirrus is moving <coughs> all their training to Knoxville, uh, which is really smart on their part. And probably about June or July they'll have a full 3D simulator there. I think it's a category D is what they describe it as, simulator, which is what you see at Simiflight and other places. And that's where you can do a lot of this without having to use an airplane. So, yes sir? Um, as far as the, what type of medical do you have to have as a pilot to operate this aircraft? Just a third class, you know, uh, unless you're going to become um, an ATP pilot or a commercial pilot, then it increases. Um, I have apparition, or what's the word? Aspirations. Aspirations, aspirations. not aspirations. aspirations. <laughs> I have aspirations of... Maybe of, perspiration. Yeah, of <laughs> getting, of getting my uh, ATP, you know, credentials, but that's going to take a little bit of time. But I'm, I'm going to work toward that, and that requires a first class member. Yeah. Yes, we'll. The, uh, the weight and balance, the envelope, like, is it... Does it want to be uh, tail heavy, nose heavy, or where, how, how cautious do you have to be loading the cabin, or if, or is it shut the door and off you go? It's pretty simple. If you've got two passengers, you want them up front. When I have taken off with full fuel, when I took off from Duluth coming back down here, it was full fuel, just me. And the uh, I was in the upper right-hand corner of the envelope, okay? I was, I was tail heavy and, you know, not maximum weight, but close to it. And, uh, and as, we fl as I flew down, it moved a little bit further toward the center, you know, because you got so much weight in the wings which are behind you versus a pilot co-pilot seat. Hmm. Are the fuel cylinders accurate? Very accurate, yeah. There's actually eight fuel sensors in the airplane, four in each tank, uh, and it's a wet wing, and I found them to be very, very accurate. Uh, the fuel system is automatic. It switches back and forth every two gallons. So it always keeps it in balance. You can manually change that if there is an imbalance, which I've done before. But uh, so it's got an automatic fuel system with a backup manual. How does the aircraft do power off? How does it glide? The glide ratio is. I is, have to ask. It's no, it's fine. Engine. It, it's you know, awesome. We we're talking about the sim train. I keep yeah. thinking, you know, engine out procedures, and I'm thinking, no, you don't have those. Oh uh, so, yeah. Well, you do. It's yeah. either on or off. <laughs> It's pretty easy to get, um, but, but the glide ratio is two miles per thousand feet. So okay. the glide and the glide, the glide speed is 114 knots indicated based, mm -hmm. and it goes down to 94 knots based upon your weight load. Um, but so at 28,000 feet, you got 56 miles of glide, assuming that the airport's at sea level. Uh, you know, and at 114 mm -hmm. knots, it's going to take you, you know, 26, 25 minutes. Of time you have to analyze your situation, as long as you set it up for best glide quick, then you got time to think things through. And 56 miles will get you to an airport, so you can kind of say, okay, do I want to go to an airport that has a K in front of it, or do I want to go to an airport that has numbers in front of it? So you can kind of evaluate where you want to go, which is kind of nice. Or just pull a parachute. Yeah, or just pull a parachute. That's, that's what my wife said. She says, why are you studying so hard? Every answer is pull a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> what is the minimum de uh, parachute deployment altitude? Uh, 1,000 feet. That's one of your call outs when you're doing takeoff. Your, pa your takeoff briefing is you, you call your altitudes for autopilot, caps, and then caps plus some judgment issues. So 1,000 feet is, is minimum. But they say, if you want to pull it, pull it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yeah, your airplane. That's right. <laughs> no, pull it, pull it. But they, they say the, the procedure is a thousand feet. <clears throat> okay. yes, uh, yes, sir. Do you have locks or bogs in your airplane? Locks or uh, bogs? Liquid oxygen or do you have bleed air for breathing, for pressurization? The pressurization is bleed air. Right. And do you it have standby? It? It, comes off the, it comes off the engine yeah. and is conditioned to where it's cooled down. That, so your your bleed air is pressurizing the cabin and is also cooling the, or heating the cabin to a certain degree. Uh, there's there's supplemental oxygen, which is a tank. It's a 70 cubic foot tank. Um, so you've got emergency oxygen that's, that's regular aviators O2. For you and the passengers. Yes, every passenger seat has an oxygen mask. Comes out from overhead. Yes. Yes. What's the effect on parachute deployment if you had a structural failure at cruise with that thin air up there? Do they, have they run the numbers on 
how far you'd fall before you get a shoot to inflate? Well, they they dumbed it down for people like me, and that is pull it. And when you pull it, <laughs> when you pull it in this plane, the autopilot takes over. The autopilot actually stops the ignition of the firing of the of the of the uh, parachute until it evaluates your speed. And the speed envelope is 135 to 140 knots in, uh, indicated. And so uh, what happens is if you're above that, the autopilot takes over, pulls the throttle back, okay, raises the nose, and as soon as it senses the envelope, it lets the parachute go. Okay? And the opposite is true in a descent. If you're going too fast, it'll pull the throttle back and it'll pull the nose up until it slows the plane down. In any case, at 25 seconds, if the plane's not in the envelope, it'll fire. So the, what they instruct you to do is to pull it, let the autopilot take over, and that's all you do. Then you just go through your emergency procedures. So, yes, sir. You have center tank fuel that also um, the icing, anti-icing capabilities leading at the wing and the VTL. Uh, the first was fuel question. All the fuel is in the wings. There, there's the no, wings. yeah, okay. just in the wings. You got two okay. fuel tanks, and and really that's it's real simple. They got tabs in there that are on 15 pound or 15 gallon increments. So one increment in each tank equals one person, which is about 200 pounds plus. So so for every so you can do a down and dirty. You can look at your tabs and get an idea because full is two people. And then if you lower the fuel each tab, you can add a person. So they give you a way to kind of dumb it down to make sure that in your mind what you see in the tanks matches what, you, what your flight plan said. As far as the anti-ice and de-ice, the plane has four systems in it to accomplish that. There's only one de-ice system, and that is the pneumatic boots on the rudder vader and the wing. Right, and those boots are activated through bleed air. Okay, the bleed air pressurizes them and then deflates them as well. How about the VTL? The VTL is boots. It's pneumatic boots. Uh, there's a, so that's the only de-ice system there is. Everything else is considered anti-ice. So you want to employ it before you get ice. And that's the D-ring on the engine, the pitot tubes, the angle indicator, the windshield, and the nose. The VTL also? Uh, the VTL is just boots. Just boots. Wings and, wings and VTL are just boots. Everything else is either T-cast fluid or it's heated. So, but there's four different systems that do that. And what is the T? What, are, what do you put the uh, T-cast fluid on? It and goes it, just on the nose. On the nose and the windshield. Okay, That's so it. the windshield's not heated. No. Okay. And and the reason you got to you have to do it before you get ice is they don't want ice building up, and then you you put on the T-cast fluid and the ice goes through the engine. Through the engine. Right. So that's why you you got to anticipate the anti-ice and the de-ice. You wait for it. So you gotta again, you gotta be ahead of the plane, which includes the speed, the weather, the temperatures, and everything else to make sure that you do that.